Hi and thank you for taking the time to watch the overview video for Mission Control. Mission Control is our project management solution that's built natively on the Salesforce platform. And we're going to be taking a quick run through all of the key features of the system today. So the key objects that you use within Mission Control uh, are going to be outlined here. So the two principal ones are the, the role and the project. The role is the record for the individual person that will be a, a resource on a project. Now against that role you can assign them to skills, you can assign them to teams and you can also track any holidays that they might have whether that's annual leave, PTO, sick leave etc. Underneath the project, the four core objects are the milestone, uh, the expense, the risk and the billing event. So the milestones are the containers for a group of related actions uh, and the actions are the individual items that, are, that, that people are responsible for that will be delivered on the project. Underneath those actions you can assign additional contributors uh, to help the action owner. Uh, you can build out checklist items which are individual to-do items that people can tick off as they're making progress and you can also track your time against the, uh, the action as well. To support the, uh, the billing events you're also able to add tax rates. So the tax rates are the, uh, the individual records that identify the tax percentage that will be applicable for any invoices that are raised against the project. And then underneath the, the billing event you're also able to receive the payment once the, once the client's paid uh, the invoice that you've generated. We have a number of key features in Mission Control that will help you uh, better manage your, your projects. So we're going to run through those now at a high level. The console is a quick launch uh, page that gives you access to all of the key parts of Mission Control. So it acts as a gateway through to all of the, uh, all of the, the tools that come with Mission Control. So here we are on the Mission Control console and you can see it's broken up into several tabs. So each tab we refer to as a, as a pad. So we can see we've got our launch pad, we've got our progress pad, we've got our management pad, and we've also got the control pad. So the launch pad is all about creating new records within the system. So here we can see that we can, we can jump into what we call the project launcher. So that gives me the ability to load in a brand new project, uh, including as many milestones as it needs. Uh, alternatively, I can select an existing project and do what we call a deep clone. And then you can see I've got the ability to create a number of new records here. So whether it's roles, holidays, teams or skills, all of the key records within the system. So if I go through to the progress pad, so this is where we would come to access all of the tools that help us record progress on the project. So the, the Kanban whiteboard will allow me to drag and drop my actions from, from one column to the, to the next. Uh, I can jump through to the timesheet, which is my weekly timesheet that shows everything that's been assigned to me. And I can log time against multiple actions in one go. The log expenses page allows me to submit a number of expenses against uh, various projects. And if I jump through to the management pad, you can see I can access uh, the project overview for a particular project. Alternatively, I can go through to the standalone Gantt chart that allows me to pull in the detail of multiple projects onto that one Gantt chart. The scheduler gives us access to our resource planning uh, module and the PMO dashboard uh, is a high level page that shows us how we're tracking against budget and schedule. So over onto the control pad, we can, uh, we can see here we've got a number of different settings. Uh, so I can schedule my digest, I can schedule my action progress tracking, uh, settings relating to my, uh, my PMO dashboard, have the ability to, get, to generate uh, sample data if I need to. Uh, I can specify here what, what logo I want to appear on my Gantt chart PDF. And then there's a number of automated features that Mission Control does in the background to save us having to do them. Now, each one of those can be disabled if you want to switch them off, and you do that from here. Carrying on down, you'll see I have access to the, to the billing event settings. So if I'm looking to use the invoice feature within Mission Control, this is where I'd fill in the, the settings for that. Now on each, uh, each individual tab can be uh, hidden from each individual role if we need it to as well. 
over on the right hand side we have access to our trackpad so we can we can jump in and take a look at the chatter feed for all of the projects in mission control uh, we can take a look at the timeline which shows us all of the key things that have been happening uh, as, as, as they've occurred uh, we can log time against any project from here we can also submit expenses against any project and if we need to add a new action uh, onto any of our projects we can do that from from here as well the project overview gives you a 360 degree view of a particular project and allows you to drill into as much detail as you need to to make sure your projects are keeping on track The project overview provides that 360 degree visibility broken up in these tabs here. So I'm on the insights tab at the moment and it gives me insights into all of the key, ch uh, key charts relating to my projects and shows me how they're performing. Uh, I'm able to jump into the overview which shows me uh, again a couple of charts and then I can drill down from the milestones to get into the actions right down to the checklist items and tick things off as and when I've worked on them I'm also able to access my resource assignment wizard there if I click onto the details tab that will take me to the detail page of the project uh, I'm able to jump into the time logs which will show me a timeline of all of the work that's been done on this project as well as my burn down chart and my hours summary Expenses will give me a summary of all of the expenses that logged against the project. Risks will also provide me with my risk matrix and all of the risks that we've currently got on the project. Billing will show me any invoices or credit notes that have been raised on the project. I'm able to drill down into those to find the line item detail and any payments that have been received. Finally I can jump onto the whiteboard which is the Kanban interface filtered specific to this project and I can also go through to the Gantt chart. Over on the right hand side I have access to a trackpad which gives me the, uh, the overall project timeline showing me all of my key dates. Uh, I can access the chatter feed and I'm also able to log time or log expenses. The whiteboard is Mission Control's Kanban project board that allows you to see all of your actions displayed on a whiteboard as if there were sticky notes stuck to a, uh, stuck to a whiteboard in the office. And you're able to drag and drop those from one column to the next to record progress and you can also do a number of other things uh, like logging time and, and so on. All of the actions on our projects are represented on the whiteboard as individual sticky notes. So this is one action for one particular project. I can see the action number. I've got links through to the action, milestone and project. And I can see key fields such as the start and end dates, hours scheduled, completed and priority values. I have the ability to choose which fields I'm displaying on these cards by jumping into the settings tab here. In addition, on my card I get an end date warning. Uh, I also see how many of my checklist items I've, I've completed, who the owner is, whether it's got contributors. I'm able to access the chatter feed. I'm also able to jump into the checklist items and mark those off as, as complete once I've finished them. I have the ability to log time and I can also edit the action so if I need to make any changes I can jump straight in and record, uh, change the key details of the, of the record. I also have the ability over on the right hand side to see a list of all of the resources that I've got in Mission Control and if I need to reassign any work I can simply drag and drop the person's photo on top of the owner and then that will be transferred over to that new, new resource. As we're working on the projects, what we're able to do is just drag and drop the actions and move them from, from one column to another um, and we're able to record the progress based on the work that we're doing on the actions. We also have the ability to dynamically change which field is driving the column. So right now we're looking at status, but we have the ability to dynamically move it to any one of these values here. The scheduler is the resource capacity planning tool inside Mission Control. It allows you to see all of your individual resources and all of the work that has been assigned to each person over a specific period of time, uh, ranging from, from one week up to 12 weeks. You're able to look into the hours distribution as well and see any hotspots that you, uh, you might have caused. 
The scheduler shows me a list of all of the resources I have in Mission Control and I can see all of the work that has been assigned to them over a period of time. So if I expand the settings you can see I can adjust the, the timeline from one week up to uh, up right out to 12 weeks. So if I'm trying to look at the capacity over a certain period of time I can do that here. I also have the ability to navigate backwards and forwards, jump to today, move forwards to a particular point in time. Um, now what this is showing me is uh, the overall allocation, uh, so I can see any holidays that have been factored in uh, to the person's availability, and I can see where they're overutilized, uh, it will flag up as red. So I have the ability to drag and drop this work off and reassign it to, to other people if I need to, and that will free up my time and allocate the work to the other resources. I also have the ability to jump in and take a look at the hours distribution. So this gives me an overlay that, that gives me how the how the hours have been allocated to that person. So you can see any hotspots that have been uh, caused by our scheduling. So we're able to jump in and make decisions as to whether this needs to be uh, reassigned or whether it can be rescheduled and we can try and even out those, uh, th those bottlenecks throughout that period of time. The Gantt chart provides that ever popular visualization of the overall project timeline. You're able to track your baselines, your actuals, and you can even export the uh, Gantt chart as a PDF. The Gantt chart is fully interactive and shows me the timeline for the overall project, the individual milestones, and the actions. So as I'm moving, as I'm working through the project, I can reschedule individual actions and any dependencies will automatically reschedule by the same period of time. I can move an entire milestone and reschedule everything within that. I can also plot milestone deadlines. You can see I can add in dependencies between those actions. So anything, uh, as I say, any, anything that is dependent will all also schedule by the same period of time. I have the ability to extend the duration of individual actions as well. I can also flag individual items as a high priority so if I double click in there you can see I can make changes to the key dates this one's high priority so when I go back it's flagged up as, as red now I also have the ability to um, add new milestones and actions you can see I've got the ability to look at multiple projects so this example here I'm looking at two projects um, I also have, have the ability to load in my baseline so I can do a comparison lessons learned process at the end of the project as, as to how well we actually delivered as opposed to how we thought we were going to deliver those projects. I also have the ability to export to MS Project and also export as a PDF. The timesheet provides a centralized interface that lets each individual person log time against all of the actions that have been assigned to them for a particular week. So in this example we're looking at my timesheet for this week and we can see all of the actions that have been assigned to me for this week as well as any holidays that I might have coming up. So for each action I can see the project, the milestone, the action. I can jump through and look at the detail of each one of those. I can also start tracking time. Uh, this example here you can see I'm already tracking time so when I'm finished I could click stop and record that. I'm able to mark the actions off as complete. I can see my billable and non-billable hours that are scheduled, completed and remaining and then I can see any hours that I've already logged this week. Now if I want to remind myself of what I've done during this time I can simply click on this and uh, it gives me a pop-up showing me the individual notes that were entered for each of those time entries. So what I'm able to do is actually come along and say, okay, well, I've just done two hours there, I've done uh, three hours there, and I've done one hour here. Now as I'm doing that, you'll see I get a total for my day and I get a total for the week. So once I'm happy with that, I'm able to click on save and that will commit all of those various time entries against those actions for me. The PMO dashboard provides you with a high level view of how your projects are tracking to both budget and schedule. In this example I'm looking at the 
PMO dashboard for this week and what it's showing me is my CPI and my SPI. Now my CPI is my cost performance index, tells me how I'm running to budget. My SPI is my scheduled performance index and it tells me how I'm running to the timeline of the project. So if this was one, I would be delivering perfectly to budget. If it's less than one, I'm not doing so well. If it's above one, I'm doing I'm, I'm doing better. So obviously not doing too great on budget, but it's, it, it's fairly close to one, uh, whereas my schedule, my my SPI is, is dramatically lower uh, so I can uh, tell I need to get some something happening here so what I can do is drill down into the individual projects find the uh, find the pro project that might be causing the problem work out which milestones and actions I need to to deal with and then go and speak to the team members to get this back on track. Now I also have the ability to load in a comparison data set so if I want to see how I'm running now against how I was running a few weeks ago I can load in a comparison data set so you, again here it's showing me that my budget has uh, ha has declined so it certainly want, wants uh, some attention and my SPI is going from bad to worse so I need to really make sure that the team get back on track with this. The Create Actions page and the Assignment Wizard come together to provide you with the ability to build out the detail of any project. You're able to build out all of the actions and then jump into the Assignment Wizard to work out who's the most suitable resource to assign onto the work. The Create Actions page lets me load in multiple records in one go. So this is one action record ready for me to fill in, but I know I'm going to need a bunch more, so I'm just going to add a few more rows to the list there. So what I'm able to do is put in the details, so which milestone is this action going to relate to, what is the action that I'm going to be doing, uh, the status, what my billable and non-billable hours might be, and when I would like to get that done. Now if I know who's going to do the work, I can simply select them from this list. Otherwise I can jump into the assignment wizard and determine who's going to be the most suitable resource to do this work for me. So I can do a blanket search and it will return everyone that I've got a role record for in Mission Control and I can see their current availability. So I can see uh, it's assigning me as the owner uh, and it's flagging up that I'm over allocated on this day so what we could do is is drag Chris down here and make him the owner instead and you'll see that it automatically pushes the time onto his schedule. In addition to Chris though, maybe I want to pull in some additional people, so what I might do is go off and search, so I might filter down on team membership and I might also filter down on specific skills that I know we need for this, for this action. So that gives me a list of people that are capable of uh, supporting Chris. So what I can do is drag a Andrea down here and say she's going to be a contributor. So of the six hours, I'm going to get Andrea to do two of them and that will automatically pop onto her schedule. So once I'm happy with that, I click on save and I'm, uh, I've assigned that work. Now I also have the ability to add in checklist items here as well. So if I click on there, I can put in the details of some checklist items. So that's that action ready to create. Now I can just quickly fill out all of the other actions. Now that I've got all of the actions ready to uh, ready to be, be saved, I can click on create actions and that will save all of those actions onto the project for me. Thanks for taking the time to watch the demo video. Uh, we do have a, a longer deep dive demo video available on our, on our website. And uh, if you would like to take a 14 day free trial, you can go to the App Exchange, uh, click the Get It Now button, and um, Mission Control will install within, within two minutes. Uh, you'll receive a quick start guide that will walk you through uh, getting the most out of that trial. And um, certainly if you wish to have a, a live demo, uh, we can organize that as well. Simply email the uh, enquiries at aprika.com.au email address. And uh, any support that you, you need, uh, you'd be able to find on the support website or you could uh, email us at support at aprika.com.au. I look forward to hearing from you. Thanks.